The hand auger, a tool I've used so much in my videos, yet have talked about in very little detail. The other day I found myself thinking, who actually invented this thing and how on earth did they make it? Well worry not my friends, in this video I shall unveil the details of this small yet strange looking tool. This particular hand auger is called a barrel eyed scotch auger, named so because of its unique barrel eye where a stick would be pushed through to make the handle. It is said that the first known auger was invented in 250 BC by Archimedes. It came in the form of a water screw that he developed to move large amounts of water uphill. As the screw turned, the flat thread collected small pools of water, pushing them along the bed of a trough before depositing them into another reservoir. Originally, augers were used as hand tools and were turned using a handle mounted across the top of the bit. These were called tea augers due to their shape, but it wasn't until 1809 that an American shipwright named Ezra Lomidou filed the first patent for the spiral auger, which is still used today. He subsequently went on to refine the design specifically for use in shipbuilding. By the early 1900s, tea augers were out of date and the first power drills were already in existence, but auger bits are still used with power drills to this day. Welcome back. It's been nearly three years since I've been in this particular room. I'm here with Alec. Hello. Go, there's going to be a link to his channel in the description below. You guys have seen me use this tool a number of times in a number of builds on the channel. I've always been intrigued with it. It's nice and small. It fits in the side of my backpack really easily. And I've asked Alec if we can forge or attempt to make one of these. Do you think it's doable? I like that you said attempt to make. Yeah, just that, in case. that gives me some sort of, gives me some wiggle room in case I'm not able to actually pull it off. What do you think? I, I mean, historically the blacksmith would have had to made it, make it, so you'd hope I'd be able to make it. We've got ourselves a big chunky bar of EN24 steel and we've got all day to stumble through it. So Good. fingers crossed, we'll make it happen. So on your example of the auger, it's just got a bit of pipe MIG welded onto the actual drill bit itself. I'd like to try forge welding it. It'd be a really cool, authentic operation. I've seen Rowan Taylor on YouTube do this. So we've got this bar and we're gonna give it a go. So Alec tells me that there are a number of ways that he could make this hand auger. The first of which is to forge weld the eye. For this, Alec needed to turn this round piece of steel into a square piece of steel. The power hammer makes quick work of this. From here, he could then make it thin enough so that it could bend on itself and be forged together using a hammer. He uses the horn of the anvil to bend and form the metal into the shape he needs. Alec then uses borax as a flux agent which helps to clean and purify the metal that is to be joined in the forge welding process. Essentially, it enables a higher quality weld. Alec then takes the metal back over to the horn of the anvil to make sure the eye is even and round and follows this up using a drift. But not everything goes to plan. I popped open my forge weld. That is bad. Mike, I am very sorry. I have failed already and we did not have much time left in the day, <laughs> so we're not going to be able to forge weld the barrel. We've got to get this done in less than four hours, so we're going to go back in the forge, forge the blade and we'll have to weld it and it'll be a MIG welded construction just like the ones that you brought today. So Alec cuts off this piece and starts again, but this time he takes a different approach. He forges out some flat bar from the same piece of steel, but this time Alec is going to work on creating the drill bit part first. So we head into the grinding room and he begins work on making a point using an angle grinder. The aim is to make it into a trident looking shape, with the middle point acting as the starting screw of the auger. Alec then heats up the metal in the forge and gets to work on folding out the outer points of the metal to form the sides of the piece. He then makes four small splits into the point of the auger, reheats it and then uses tongs to twist the metal and create the screw part of the piece. He has to be fairly quick when twisting it 
as once the metal is held in the vise, the heat is drawn out from it very fast. Once this is done, he then began work on shaping the edges of the cutting blade of the auger. However, after a number of heats and twists, Alec wasn't happy with the outcome. So in true Alec form, he decided to start again. Planning to drill any uh, curved holes? <laughs> But with time fast running out, the pressure was really on to get this auger finished. So, back to the power hammer, and a new piece of flat bar had been forged. Instead of forming the tip and then twisting it, I'm going to try simply twisting it. So, lock these in place. Which way? Anti-clockwise. Almost did it wrong. So I'm just going to try and get a really nice, even twist in as many heats as it takes. And then once it's twisted, I'll then take to the grinder form the point and the cutting edges, instead of doing them first hot. So far, that looks a little more promising. Once the flukes have been twisted, Alec refined the tang ready for the eye to be fitted. It was then time for one more heat and then left to cool in the normalising cycle. Once the auger had cooled, it was into the grinding room where Alec began to make the cylindrical shape that would form the screw part of the auger. He also started to grind the edges of the flukes to ensure that the profile of this auger was symmetrical and it stayed in that cylinder shape. At this stage, the auger was really taking its shape. Now for the finesse work. Alec took a triangle file and worked on creating the point of the drill. However, with time against him, he soon realised he would need to speed the process up. <sighs> this is going to take a while. It's quite hard steel. <laughs> so it was off to another area of the workshop where he began to use a Dremel and cutting wheel to grind away the individual lines of the drill bit section. It's really important that this stage is done correctly as this is the first part of the auger that will meet the wood and it needs to be able to bite and pull the auger down straight in order to make the hole straight. Now, on the hand auger that I regularly use in my videos, there are two small cutting faces on the sides of the drill. These are also there to help keep the auger straight when cutting through wood. So Alec used the angle grinder to create the lipped edge needed to form this part of the auger. With the drill bit now pretty much finished, the final stage of the process was to make the barrel eye that is so significant to this particular hand auger. For this, Alec cut off a short piece of pipe and drilled a hole through it. He fixed the tang of the drill bit into the barrel eye and then welded it in place. It's about close. Now it was just a case of hardening the auger using some heat. Once the metal was hot enough, it was then quenched in oil and left to cool. Alec then waits to see the temper process and now you get to see the finished project. Because what I want to do is I want the residual heat from back here to push and conduct up towards our cutting edge so that we end up with a straw here. It's so difficult to see on camera. But you see the color up here, it's kind of straw-like. That indicates it's about 400 degrees Fahrenheit. That's what we're looking up here at the tip. And in fact, I'm gonna say that we actually want a blue, which is even hotter. 
maybe 450, 500 degrees Fahrenheit, 200, 220 degrees Celsius, roughly. So that blue is now fading into a light straw as it comes up to here, towards the tip. Almost there. I will give this tip a touch with the torch because I definitely don't want that sharp point to be too hard. Otherwise, that's gonna, otherwise that's going to snap. So we'll give it a little, uh, little loving. Okay. Et voila, c'est fini. Alec, I think we did it, mate. Well, I think you did it. Well, you know, all thanks to your help, it's a miracle. It's been brilliant. I really I hope you guys have learned from this experience. It's something totally new to me. It's a tool I use pretty much all the time, but never quite knew how it was made. So Neither did I. It was good fun. We did about three different types of uh, ways of making it. Trial and error, but you got there. Lots of trial and error. We got there. Turns out you just twist the thing and grind the tip and you're going to have a... <laughs> Way it's, better luck than trying to forge too much of it. It was a really fun experience. It was Thanks great. Thanks for asking Thank me to you. make it. No, I really appreciate it. I'm going to be putting that to the test in a, I don't know, a couple of videos time probably. In the meantime, head on over to Alex's channel. I'll put a link in the description. Hit that subscribe button. There's plenty of blacksmithing content on there. And there's also some old videos that we did together, which I'll put in there as well. Cheers. Thanks so much. Thank you, Mike. Thanks for coming. See you guys soon. Bye-bye.